Good morning, party people. <laughs> I like how oh, uh, Surly Dev says it's not like 4.30. It is 4.30. Good morning, party people. Yes, it is very much morning here in uh, downtown San Diego. It's oh dark 30. I have client work today. Uh, so I when do I go to bed? Um, so generally, I'm in bed at like 8 or 9 o'clock, somewhere in there. And I'll usually read in bed. I take my trusty iPad to bed. And of all the strange things, I actually read... Uh, real estate sites. I don't know why I'm just mesmerized by real estate sites. Um, do, do, ooh, it's dark in uh, uh, Brisbane. It was funny, Little Bobby Table Five. When I saw you subscribe the first time, I was like, "Oh, that's a, that's a good, that's a pretty good name." Uh, Matt, good morning from Kansas. Uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yes, early dev reading books online in bed. So true story. So for like a year, maybe two, three years, I had. Oh, 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 little, oh, no, I thought you were already subscribed for something. It must have been when you followed me that I saw that. Uh, but uh, I used to keep Ben Navarez's book. Um, oh, and it's Twitch Prime, too. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Woo. Um, uh, Salty says crackly audio could be me. We'll see if anybody else says that. It looks like it's uh, coming through okay on my side. Richie's usually a good judge for that, too. Richie, if it's crackly, let me know. So one of the, one of the uh, attendees in yesterday's class mentioned that it crackled when I moved my arms. Uh, saying audio's good here. Okay, cool. Um, but yes, early death for like two years straight, I had Ben Navarez's book inside the query optimizer on my bed stand. And I would like try to get to it all the time. Uh, Surly says, I seem a little quiet today. It's just me. I'm just a little shy. Uh, I can turn it up though. Hold on a second. Let's uh, turn that little fella up a little. Yeah, we'll see. I'll pull the gain up just a little. We'll see how that goes. Because I just want to make sure that I don't clip too bad. If I clip too bad, let me know. Surly Dev says, oh, it was Chrome. Oh, okay. In that case, I'm going to turn it down just a little because I think sometimes I do clip when I go up a little bit. Uh, all right, so Jim says uh, early start today. I act, I usually get started even earlier than this when I'm off uh, streaming. So I have a client that starts at 6 a.m. Pacific time, and I've got I need to eat breakfast, so I'm going to finish in like an hour from now. But what I want to do this morning is I want to show you a brand new demo that I'm working on for mastering query tuning. Now, whenever I write new stuff, whenever I write new slides, new presentations, whatever, there are a couple of tricks to it. One of the tricks is, can I get the timing right on how long the demo will take? Like, I genuinely don't know what kinds of questions people are going to ask and how long it's going to take to explain them. So I'm trying to figure out how much I can teach in any one 45 minute span. I don't want to go beyond 45 minutes usually in a module, because um, if it's more than 45 minutes, I break it up into a separate module. I think the code that I have here that I'm about to show you is probably two modules. So what I'm trying to figure out is as I'm explaining things live, uh, how, what kinds of questions y'all ask and how long it takes me to get through the lesson. So to set the stage a little bit, we're going to be at the point in mastering query tuning where I'm going to be talking about differences in execution plans based on how much data is coming in. So as SQL Server gets more and more data, it'll automatically parallelize queries across multiple threads. One of the reasons I just love SQL Server is it automatically makes some of these decisions. But just because you see parallelism in an execution plan doesn't mean anything it means nothing at all it doesn't mean that the work actually went parallel doesn't mean that it was balanced across multiple threads doesn't mean it was a good idea and by the end of this demo which we may not hit inside the next hour uh, uh rodney uh dude, so read the rodney for the love of god will you read the link that you put up there read if you can't read to figure out the answer to that you're doomed to begin with sql server isn't going to be a good fit for you i should easy on that um so <laughs> it's richie i was going to talk about postgres in comparison things like uh, parallelism too um so in this by this this point in time i want to get people to get that just because you see parallelism icons on execution plans doesn't mean a damn thing and you're also going to start to explain or understand where cx packet comes from and why you can't really uh, or read anything into that. Just because you CX pa see CX packet doesn't mean that you have a parallelism problem and you'll understand why it's so damn hard to get out of your execution plans. So let's get started. 
So in here, I have SQL Server 2019 and the large version of Stack Overflow. Um, uh, little Bobby Tables, it could be just you, who knows? You can also see you're on my Twitch channel, so you should be okay. Uh, Akil says, do you sleep? Yes, I do. I do indeed, like a baby, because I'm so at peace with myself. So up here, I'm setting SQL Server's default parallelism settings so that queries can go wild in parallel. Um, we're setting a really low cost threshold for parallelism and a really high max stop. And I'm on an eight core VM. We use eight core VMs a lot of the time when I'm doing query tuning demos. And I've dropped uh, the, the OS on my VM. I'm using Mac. I'm using a Mac, as you can see here by the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Is today a competition to see who can ask the dumbest questions? I swear to God. Uh, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Just kidding. I love all of you, mostly, kind of. So in here, I'm setting uh, the default settings for parallelism. Then I'm going and creating a couple of indexes. I'm creating a couple of indexes to make it easier to find posts from l people who live in a specific location. For example, I want to find all the people in London and then the posts that they've left on Stack Overflow. So let's say that I need to go find all of the users who live in London in here. Oh, Richie says the streaming on the live page is indeed broken. Okay, cool. Um, so y'all can watch the stream. I'll put a link to the stream over in Restream. You can watch the live stream at HBS twitch.tv slash Brentozar. So uh, to find all of the users in one location, I'm going to execute this, and it'll use the index right above. Here, that index perfectly covers the query that I'm dealing with here. I want to seek directly to the people who live in London, and I'm just going to read out their IDs. For that, if I look at the execution plan, SQL Server doesn't need to go parallel here. There's not a lot of work. This index covers everything that we need. Zing right into the index on location. Now, for those of you who went through how to think like the engine, this is the equivalent of the black pages that we're going to dive bomb into just the location. SQL Server doesn't need a whole lot of CPU power in order to execute this because really we're not reading a whole lot of 8K pages. If I go up to the logical reads under properties, we only read 149 8K pages and that's it. You don't need multiple CPU cores to do that. That's a piece of cake. 149 reads can be done in absolutely no time as evidenced by our really fast query execution time. Thank you, Chucky. I appreciate that. So now let's go in and add something else though. Let's add a key lookup. Let's say I want to find everybody in London and their name, and I haven't ordered by their name or anything like that. I'm just saying in the result sets, I also want to see these people's names. If I look over at the execution plan, and I'm going to start moving this around a little bit so I can zoom in. If I look over at the execution plan, I have something new. I have the key lookup, but then I also have parallelism. Now here's the thing with parallelism. When you see that parallelism icon, everything to the east that has the racing stripes on it, these went parallel, sort of. Think about it this way. Everything from the parallelism icon this way was really just broken up into team members. In fundamentals classes, I talk about going to the office supply closet. I talk about saying, all right, you got a bunch of people uh, here. Let's gather a bunch of team members. Let's send them into the office supply closet to go read these pages with data in them. So what I really did was I broke this into team members, but if I go into the index seeks properties and I look up at their IO stats, Let's see how parallel this went. Thread zero is the coordinating thread. Thread zero is like the team coach that's going to tell everybody else what to do. Team th uh, thread zero is a manager. He doesn't do any real work, so it's very rare that you see any reads from him that are reading out end user data. All he's really doing is getting a quick look at the pages to figure out who he needs to allocate threads to. So he did five logical reads, but he's not really producing any results. Hi, Eamon. Good to see you again from Saudi Arabia. Ah, I got right this time. But then look at the other threads. So here we have one thread that read 23 pages, one thread that read 67, and one thread that read 63. And that's it. 
technically the query went parallel across eight threads, but did it really? When you look at that, only three people actually went into the office supply closet and started reading data. And the work wasn't evenly balanced. Now, right now, I don't care because we're only talking about reading 158K pages. That's just not that big of a deal. But now, remember that everything east of the parallelism operator was broken up by team member, and they don't get to talk to each other. So I sent one person into the supply closet who went through and read 23 pages, one read 67 and one read 63. The other five threads, they went out for a smoke break. They're not interested in playing around with this. They're not going to help out at all during this query's execution. And I have work to do. Jedi Mind Gorilla, I don't know that I believe that. I think I usually see you out with the cool kids by the smoking lounge is where I usually see you. So now if I look at the key lookup, if I go down here to the key lookup, this is broken up the same way as this is. So let's go back up here to the location. Now, thread one read hardly any rows. Threads five and six read some rows. So I've got thread one, five, and six. One, five, six. Remember, one, five, and six. Now go down to key lookups and look what we have. We have thread one did like 8,000 reads, thread five and six did 20,000 reads, and the rest of them out with the cool kids out doing the smoking break. This work wasn't evenly divided, and it's not redivided until you get up closer back up to a parallelism operator again. Same thing with the nested loops. These were done broken up by threads. So if I look at the number of reads, reads, Surly Dev uh, says, I don't smoke, but I would frequently take an outside walk near the smoking shed because that's where you hear all the gossip and the real information about the company. I'll tell you what. See, I feel the same way. I was, I, when I worked for a wine and spirits company, I would actually go out with the smokers. I would get secondhand smoke and all that. But I'm like, the, the smokers really knew everything that was going on. It was like cross-department meetings all the time. It was like a fast way to get up to speed on everything that was happening inside every division of the company. Smoking might not be good for your physical health, but it was really good for knowing what was going on inside the company. I, I wish that there was something like that that didn't involve smoking, where we people would just randomly get together and uh, for brief periods of time. Yeah, now not the DBA you're looking for, same exact idea. It would, I, I hear from friends of mine that gambling was a similar thing. Like people would get together and either throw dice or else they do the fantasy football thing and uh, get together and have those discussions. But even that, you don't do it. You don't take a gambling break during the middle of the day, or at least I don't. Going for beer, Scott, the same thing. It's just too late in the day at that point. And uh, 9 a.m. says gum chewing as a quick plug. My favorite kind, this, is, this stuff's absolutely amazing. I don't know that I can get the focus quite right. Yeah, I probably can't. That's ah, all right. I'll leave it for another day. All right, so coming back over here, this work isn't evenly divided across threads. But at this point, who cares? Does anyone really mind when the query is this short? The query finishes in less than a second. And does it really matter that we spun up five extra threads and we didn't do anything with them? Are we really like having a performance bottleneck? Well, kind of. If I go into the select and go into wait stats, so newer versions of SQL Server will show the wait stats in the actual query plan. And look what you have here you have this wait type that befuddles people all the time. CX packet, class exchange packet. This indicates that parallelism isn't evenly balanced. And in this case, that's true. In this case, I've allocated five extra threads who sat around taking a smoke break and didn't really do me any good. This is where people start to get a little confused about CX packet, thinking that CX packet is bad. But is it slowing this query down? Not at all. I'm not tying up five cores as I go through and do this work. Those extra cores just woke up and said, oh, you, you don't need me for anything? I, I, I'll be right back. And then they went off for a smoke break. But they could do other work if they wanted to, if we had other queries that were needing to execute things around the same time. 
There are drawbacks. There are times when you don't want to spin up any more worker threads. Can I fix that? Can I rebalance this work with option max dop hints? So you can set option max dop hints up here. Let me say option max dop five just to say a random different oddball number. Right now I have zero because we're spinning up eight threads in order to do this work. If I go over here to my parallelism operator and I look at, whoops, go over here, my, parallel, my operator here, you can see that I had uh, out of my eight cores, five of them are sitting around board. Well, as I gradually set this number lower and lower, will SQL Server rebalance that work? Let's try to run the query again. Let's look at the execution plan. And then let's see how he divided work across those IOs. And it's actually still the same exact thing. The work isn't evenly balanced, and I'm going to still have one core's worth of CX packet weights across the whole time. What if I go down even lower? What happens if I go down to max stop three and run it and execute? Go in and look at my plan, look at my index seek, then go over to my actual number of IOs, and then come down here. And now, oh, all of a sudden now, I have work evenly, well, it's not evenly balanced. It's just that I haven't spun up any extra cores than uh, necessary. Here, I don't have any unallocated cores sitting around. Jedi Mind Gorilla says, but you had four cores used that time. No, not at all. That The core who goes out for a smoke break, he can actually work on other results. I'm not tying him up. The only thing that I'm tying up is a worker thread, but worker threads don't necessarily use CPU. So in this case, if I wanted to be really super efficient, I could talk about using a max stop three hint, but of course the results are going to be different for every single value that I pass in here for location. Some of them are going to have a whole lot of data. Some of them are going to have hardly any data. Now, do I really care when the query looks like this? No, not even a little. This query runs so fast and I have some CX packet weights. Who the heck cares? I don't care. Let's start adding on a little bit more work. Let's add in an order by. Let's find all the people in London and then order them by display name. So how does this work get allocated? Do you send all your friends into the supply closet, have them find the people in London, come back, give them all to you, and then you do the sorting? Hell no. This is what your friends are for. You send them into the supply closet, have them go find all the people in London, have them all sort by name, and then have them read them back to you in a way that you can coordinate the results so that you don't have to sort it twice. You're just like, okay, everybody give me your first display name. All right, you're the highest. You keep reading out until someone else has a, another display name that matches. And that's exactly what SQL Server does. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. Everything east of the parallelism operator was all broken up by team members. So we know that in this index seek, one of the threads read more pages than the rest. A couple of them read less. And then I got five threads who are sitting around idle, not doing jack. So that means I had three threads that were doing key lookups here, that find like between six and 25,000 rows. And now the sort. So let's look at the sort and let's look at how many rows each one of them is sorting. Right now, it's decently balanced, not perfect, but decently balanced across three threads, the other five threads out for a smoke break. Here's the next thing that's weird about this. If I go look at memory, so memory, come down out here and here, memory is divided evenly across all of the threads. Not the threads with data, it's divided equally across all of the threads. Now it's starting to hurt a little bit that I had five people take off for a smoke break because they took their memory with them. Oh. So if I wanted to do a better job of allocating resources, instead of having each one of these, Botsko says free threads use this memory for, well, you know how it is when you go out for a smoke break, you're going to hear things and you got to remember them. So you use that memory to, 
oh, no, wait, that's not how SQL Server works. Free threads, free threads don't use the memory. It just ends up going to waste. If I had a button to play a toilet flushing sound, I would totally play a flushing toilet sound. So this memory is at this point, this unbalance of memory, this hurts us a little bit here. And I could get that better balanced if I hinted a lower max stop. Now, God knows you should not do this. But if I said option max stop three, for example, because we know that only three Fred, three, th free Fred are finding three threads. <laughs> That's really dumb. That's pretty good. Um, so if I go and look at the execution plan, now the fact that I had a lower max stop means I didn't spill to disk. The fact that I lowered the number of cores that were involved means that the memory was allocated differently across each of these. This is bananas. This means I get the same amount of RAM overall, but because I lowered my max stop, each thread gets more RAM and will be less likely to spill to disk. Now you start caring about things like unused thread allocations. Now, just because I lowered the option max stop, all that did was fix one thing. It fixed the spills because before when I didn't hint max stop, if I go back and execute that again and I go look at the sort, the sort spilled to disk. You saw, we, and it wasn't much still, and we're talking about a relatively small demo here so that it runs fairly quickly. But here, because I th broke memory up across eight threads, this starts to cause a problem. So what do you do about this? In a perfect world, when we just talk about general performance tuning, in a perfect world, I don't spin up more worker threads than I actually need in order to accomplish a goal. I only spin up enough worker threads where it makes sense. Right now, though, I have max stop of zero, so I'm going wild and crazy with the parallelism. When you see servers that have the default settings for parallelism, it's likely that they're spinning up too many worker threads and that work isn't evenly balanced across the threads. Just because you see parallelism icons on a query plan doesn't mean that the work was evenly balanced across the threads. An uneven work allocation presents problems in terms of things like CX packet weights, spilling to disk when you really didn't need to, and waiting too long on one core who ended up getting lumpy work when one core ends up finding way more people than others. Now let's make it worse. Let's make it a little bit worse. But before I do, I'm going to give a brief shout out to this week's sponsor. So Quest Software is doing a Ask the Experts, and I use that term really loosely, Ask the Experts uh, about, uh, questions about performance tuning. So me and Pinal are getting together for a webcast with Quest on June the 24th. You can register now at brentozar.com slash go slash experts, and you could, we're doing a totally free open Q&A. This is really cool for those of us who people are always dropping into my Twitch channel and asking completely and wildly unrelated performance questions like, Hey, what happens if I hook up a llama to a linked server? And I'm like, yo, dog, I don't know. But if Quest is going to pay for it, then I'll go through and uh, actually answer questions like that. Hanny says he's uh, registered. Or, uh, good to see you, Hanny. I haven't seen you in a while in here. I, not a while. I can't remember if I saw you last week or not. Mm. Now let's get back to the show. So in here, this query isn't really that bad. I don't have huge problems with this query. It still finishes relatively quickly, but let's make things worse. Let's go add a join. Ha <laughs> David. Oh, David, that's good. David, that's very good. <laughs> yes, and yes, like what is TempDB? That is so cool. Um, that, that, that last one for what is, where am I? I would like to call the police on you. Um, so now let's go down a little further. So now I'm going to add a join. Um, and little Bobby Table, that's a great question. Could increasing cost threshold for parallelism help? Well, if I hover my mouse over the select, look at the uh, subtree cost on this. The subtree cost on this is 62. If I raise cost threshold up beyond 62, it would help in the sense that the query would go single threaded. This is why we talk about raising the cost threshold for parallelism to avoid all this overhead of breaking work across multiple threads and then recombining it in and breaking memory across multiple threads. 
because if all the stuff was just on one thread, we wouldn't have to worry about getting these tiny little memory allocations per thread. We'd get it all in one and we'd be done. So that's a great question there. Um, Baryon says, resource governor could help too, right? Unfortunately, so. Resource governor doesn't make queries faster. Resource governor makes queries slower. Now you could put max stop on groups of people, but at that point, what's the point of doing that? Why not just set it at the server level? Set your cost threshold and max stop appropriately across the entire server and help everyone avoid the problems with imbalanced parallelism. Sounds like ask your doctor if resource governor is right for you. I, I love resource governor in certain situations. This just isn't one of those situations. But it's a good, uh, it's a good idea. It's, a, it's not really a good idea. That's okay. I like you. You're smart. You ask good questions. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not just saying that generically, because you know if you've been in here, there are a lot of people who ask terrible questions. <sighs> All right. So now, Jedi Mind Gorilla. Cool. See you there. So now let's add a join. Now I didn't use, and, and Malik says, can this end up being unused memory grant? It's unused for the threads that sat around and did nothing. And then the threads that actually got work assigned to them, they were screwed. They were the ones who ended up spilling to disk. So Rodney says, I asked dumb questions. I, usually, I feel really dumb about the. I have posted a couple of questions on dba.stackexchange that have been up there for like two years and nobody knows the answer. And I'm always like, is it because my question is really dumb or is it because there really isn't an answer for it? So in here, I'm going to add a join over to the posts table and I've got an index to support it. So what's going to happen is that we're going to find the 20,000 people who live in London then for each one of them, we're going to do an index seek to that index up on the top to fetch their posts. So let's get all of their posts. I'm going to go hit execute. Now I should say too, this query brings back half a million rows. It's not trivial. Normally, I don't like to bring back half a million rows, but I'm doing this as part of the demo just to explain what's going on here. If 500, a half a million rows, it finishes in two seconds. It's not really that big of a deal. If I go look at the execution plan, though, there are these interesting things that's happening. Over at the far left, parallelism is still way over there to the west, like not even close. Andy, welcome to the club. Good to see you. I will say, I'm disappointed that Andy hadn't followed me earlier because I've been following Andy in his footsteps for years, but I digress. So way over there to the west is that parallelism operator. Everything out here to the east was all just completely separated out by individuals. <laughs> no lock. That's funny. There's actually a ramification to that. So in here, we got this index seek that happens. We know that this work isn't evenly broken up by core. Then we know this isn't evenly broken up by core. The sort wasn't evenly broken up by core. Our sort spilled to disk. If I go over and look at my, uh, uh, my number of reads or number of rows, so here we can see that the number of rows aren't broken up. Now things are about to become ugly. Because now I have 8,000 people, 8,000 people, 2,000 people, and we have to do that many index seeks. This is where I really wish that operations on plans were three-dimensional. I wish they popped off the page in terms of the number of times that they were executed. Because we look at that index seek and we think that it was only done one time. But look at the number of executions here. This thing was done 20,000 times, each of which incurs logical reads. And this work was not broken up evenly by thread. Look at the amount of rows that are coming back per thread. Now this makes sense because some people in London are more talkative than others. I'm looking at you, Jedi Mind Gorilla. Some people in London talk more than others. So SQL Server doesn't know which one of them are going to talk more than others. And this work is walled off now per thread. Whoever happens to get the really talkative users are going to, I know, right, are going to end up doing way more index seeks. So if I also look at their IO statistics, Botsko says, yes, they are very screwed. Their IO stats aren't that bad yet. But some of these threads went in and found a boatload, 
keep this safe for work. Boatload of rows. As a side note, people are always surprised when they meet me that I swear like a sailor. I mean, I curse a lot. And so I try to keep it friendly family, family friendly in here for y'all because we have nice people like Spitfire Raf 100, whose name I just totally adore. And I know that they have very sensitive ears. So I try not to swear too much in here. Every now and then, F-bomb, but whatever. So in here, the reads aren't that imbalanced yet, but holy mackerel, the rows are imbalanced as all get out. And this is going to get even worse the more joins and the more operations that I add. Right now, I only have an index seek because right now, the only thing that I <laughs> got your kid very interested in what swearing is, it means taking an oath for office. You lay your hand on a Bible and you swear that you, to your whatever it is that you will be absolutely true to whatever God it is that you hold. <laughs> So in here, uh, if I look at this right now, I'm only bringing back the post ID. The post ID is included on my index. So that does it. We do need a Brent swear box. That would be really funny. Um, so in this now, if I try to get additional columns off of the post table, now the imbalanced work is really going to get ugly. So let's come back out here to uh, do a, a uh, index seek. Oh, and shoe, it's zero. It's zero in here, and I have eight cores. So I have eight cores, and queries are going parallel across all eight threads. It's funny, I started doing this demo first thing this morning, and I was using a 16-core VM, and then my VM crashed, and I'm like, eh, I don't think I'm going to do that one uh, live on the web today. So now I'm up to five seconds. The query's taken a little bit longer. Welcome to the club, Digital Axiom. Query's taken a little bit longer to bring back those half a million rows, and now look what's different. There's no parallelism operator. <laughs> Except wait. That also means the query's running slower. Because now, yes, it's kind of good that the memory was all allocated just to one thread, but the query didn't go quicker. Tenacious data, welcome to the club. So if I look at the I, things like I.O. stats, if I look at the number of rows that are being brought back, it says all threads, but it's only just one thread. There's no parallelism icons in here. Not using multiple threads kind of backfired a little on me. Yeah, I don't have the problem of unbalanced parallelism, but now the query's running slower. The thing I want you to take away inside here at this point of it, let me come back up to these two queries. So I got these two queries. Up top, the query went single threaded. On the bottom, or I'm sorry, up top, the query went multi threaded. Down here, certainly does talking on YouTube too, that's funny. Um, down here, when I added more work, we actually went back to single threaded. SQL Server makes this decision not just based on the cost of the query, but whether or not parallelism makes sense for that particular query. In this example, it didn't. SQL Server decided on the fly, even though the cost of that query was way far up above my cost threshold for parallelism. If I look at that execution plan, hover my mouse over the select, the cost was 713. <coughs> way far above my cost threshold for parallelism. And yet, SQL Server decided not to parallelize that query. Sometimes, depending on some reasons for queries, you'll see things like couldn't uh, generate a valid parallel plan. That's a separate discussion involving things like user-defined functions or table variables inside your execution plan. So I, I kind of want my parallelism back. And I can get my parallelism back by adding more work into the query. I'm going to go ahead and add something else inside of my order by. Zeus Hero, um, can we say more CX packet type means more worker threads are engaged? Maybe some of them are no use. Absolutely, that's what we're seeing here. Yes, the more uh, unused worker threads that I have, the higher my CX packet weights will go. And, and you're about to see it really big time in this particular query. Let's get our parallelism back. Get Justin Timberlake here to bring my parallelism back. Um, and all that I did was I added one more column here in my order by. Notice now it's still taking a long time. It's taken just as long as this query took single threaded. Now I did add a little bit more work. I asked it to sort by one more column. And then if I look at the execution plan, I have parallelism back. 
but is it balanced? The way that we'll find out is we'll start over at the top right at our driver table. Let's look at the top right and see if, oh, it's still not evenly balanced. So when you see it unevenly balanced right at the beginning, the rest of these poor operators are utterly screwed because it's not going to get rebalanced until we get all the way over there to the west and start bringing the results back together from parallelism operators. Anshu, that is not a quick question. That's a huge question. That, unfortunately, that's where the mastering classes come in. Ma specifically in mastering server tuning, we talk about those algorithms. So now I've got, we saw last time under uh, Little Bobby Table said, why did thread zero have five rows against it? It wasn't five rows, it's actually five IOs. Thread zero is the coordinating thread that manages parallelism. So he has to do a little bit of reads in order to figure out how he's going to process past data across multiple threads. He's not actually processing results. He's just like your manager. He's doing the bare minimum of work just in order to keep you busy. So we saw earlier when we went and looked at the index seek, the reads were roughly similar out across the index seek. Now, it's still unbalanced as hell. I got five threads that aren't doing anything out here. I got five threads that are doing nothing at all. But then still the three threads that are doing work still have a roughly similar number of reads, vaguely similar, similar number of reads, but they have wildly different number of rows. Because it turns out that one of these people likes to talk a lot. And one of these people has left a whole lot of posts over in the Stack Overflow database. Now is when the three dimensionality of this is about to really suck bad. Because every one of these rows, we have to go do that key lookup for. Now is when things get really imbalanced. Buckle up. I'm going to look at the key lookup, look at the number of rows that each of these are doing, or uh, reads that each of these are doing. Oh, damn. Jim Van Allen. <laughs> Jim, uh, Jim, I can't disagree with that. Jim, that's probably true. Although it depends on which, uh, whether you're talking to the family members, you know that they think they do all the work when it's the employees doing all the work. So here, I got one thread that did over a million logical reads, and the rest of them are all out taking a smoke break. So how does this impact our query? Well, when the work isn't evenly divided, then you got, you're sitting around waiting for the one thread to do all of his work, because the rest of this work, like a sort, can't finish until we've gotten everybody's data back in. We got to get everybody's data before we sort it. Plus, those, queer, those uh, threads that uh, sucked up memory and weren't actually using anything, I got all this memory in here tied up for threads that have no rows to them whatsoever. This was just wasted. And that's why we end up doing things like the spill to disk that you see here, because that one poor row has like one poor thread has like a million rows that he's bringing back. Of course, he's going to end up spilling to disk because he didn't get high enough fractions. So what were those five threads waiting on while they were sitting around taking a smoke break? Well, when you look, there he is. No. CX packet. So I'm spending all this time, quote unquote, waiting on CX packet. But when you see CX packet, what that really means is that we just don't have queries with even amounts of with even amounts of work going on. Abraham, we talk about that in the mastering server tuning class, mastering server tuning. Fraud says, is the memory even always evenly divided between all threads? You know, that's a really good question. As far as I've seen, yes, but I, I may not be the gospel truth on that one. I don't, I've never gone out and specifically looked for imbalanced threads or for where one thread might have been granted more memory. It might even be possible. I have no idea. For me, this foundational knowledge here of understanding how the memory is divided between threads just evenly at the get-go starts to help me understand 
when I see a parallelism icon way off to the left, that means I may have to do some rebalancing myself so that the work is more evenly balanced. I'm not usually as worried about the memory as I am about imbalanced amounts of work. Like here, this one poor thread that is just getting his butt handed to him, this one thread that's doing like 1.7 uh, million logical reads all by himself. And Permyakov says, uh, yeah, idle threads wasting physical memory is a little strange. When people usually look at a parallel plan like this, they just assume that everything with racing stripes, as Eric Darling likes to call, Eric Darling says these little arrows are called racing stripes. I just utterly adore that. Everything with racing stripes went parallel, so it spread across multiple threads. And that's not true at all. Now, for example, I'm going to take it to the next logical extreme. And I'm going to look for a smaller place. Instead of looking for London, let's look for, say, San Diego. San Diego, California, USA, and let's rerun the same query. Now, when you look at this, what do you think happened? How many threads do you think spun up? How was the work evenly balanced across those threads? Your first clue is that those numbers are really small. There aren't a lot of us here in San Diego, California, and we don't ask that many Stack Overflow questions. So let's see whether or not this really went parallel. Let's look with the very first driver table and see how many of them actually did logical reads. One. One thread did any work. Seven threads went out for a smoke break. Just because you see parallelism on a plan doesn't mean it actually went parallel. I'm going to go all the way up to the sort, all of the work going through all of here. How many rows were actually pulled off? Only one thread found any rows whatsoever. So when you're looking at an execution plan, when you're seeing things that have a parallelism icon on it, that doesn't mean that the query plan actually went multi-threaded. It means that SQL Server allocated multiple worker threads, but all of them may have gone out for a smoke break other than one poor unsuspecting soul. One may have been just stuck with all of the work whatsoever. And this has spectacular problems when we start to talk about outlier data. There's a person in Stack Overflow you might have been uh, aware of, John Skeet. John Skeet is a legendary user who does a phenomenal amount of work on Stack Overflow. John Skeet lives in Reading, United Kingdom. Let's see what happens when we look for Reading, United Kingdom and see how uh, this whole thing plays out. <laughs> Not the DBA you're looking for. That's really good. Um, Abraham says, does this have anything to do with the tipping point? Not at all. Nothing uh, whatsoever. That's, an, that's a great concept, and it's a lot of fun to talk about, but nothing to do with this. So coming back over here, let's search for something different. Let's say reading United Kingdom and search for that. A Reading. Oh, Surly Dev. I'm so glad you said that. You're absolutely right. Reading, United Kingdom. Yes. UK with all their wacko uh, pronunciations. It, 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 I say wacko. Elegant. I'm such a huge fan of Fortnum and Mason's T, and I'm going to leave it at that. So here, SQL Server goes, oh, it's hardly any work at all. <laughs> I'm going to say Lester. I'm going to say Lester and ooh, Launston, I don't know, but I'm going to say Lester. It can't be Leicester. Worcestershire. 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 Good to see you, G Surgeon, from uh, Norway, is it? It's so Norway or the Netherlands. I never remember which one of those two it is. It is Leicester. Oh, I got it. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's very good. Um, so in here, <laughs> Southwark. Um, and the same thing with Poland names like Wrocław, Wrocław, Poland. The first time I was going over to Poland uh, to speak at a, uh, at a oh, it's, it is Netherlands. Um, the first time I was going over to Poland to speak at a conference, I'm like Googling. I'm like, how do I pronounce this? Because this, the, it can't be pronounced the way it looks with the letters. 
So in here, a SQL Server goes, oh, I don't have a lot of work to do. I'm just going to go single threaded. I don't even have to balance things across multiple threads. Because SQL Server doesn't know who lives in Reading United Kingdom. SQL Server knows that very few people do, but SQL Server doesn't know how talkative they are. SQL Eagle, so you might be proud of me, Vratzvav. I worked really hard on that, Vratzvav. I mean, I can say Krakow, but who can't say Krakow? That's easy. Um, so if SQL Server doesn't have to worry about imbalanced parallelism here. SQL Server just made a crappy decision. SQL Server just didn't know how many people or how talkative the people in Reading actually are. So here, I, I kind of, to some extent, have an issue with just plain old bad query estimation, not as much parallelism. But as we talk about here, we've talked about looking for different values. We've talked about looking for, say, San Diego, London, Reading. This brings to mind an interesting question. What happens with parameter sniffing? What happens when I take this whole thing and I put it into a stored procedure? This is going to cause some really fun problems. Here, I have the exact same query that we've been running so far, but now I'm going to put it into a stored procedure. Here, I'm going to say, based on whatever location I pass in, go build an execution plan for that based on whatever parameter happens to come in first. Let's go see. I'll go put the stored procedure into memory. Then I'm going to go run it for London. Now we know that London is a big location, produces a lot of data. We also know that it takes some time in order to execute. Come on, big fella. Come on, big fella. Come on, big fella. SQL Server, I swear. Oh, it's like jumping a motorcycle over a canyon. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes people are going to love it. Sometimes the thing's going to crash into pain. But, oh, for the love of God. 30 seconds later. 30 seconds later. Now let's go look at the execution plan and see what happened. So it is, if I go look at the I.O. stats here, Look at my logical number of reads, just like we saw when we ran it as a plain, simple query. SQL Server doesn't balance the threads evenly. Some of the threads get data, some of them do not. Then if I look over at the sort, here on the number of sort, the results aren't actually evenly balanced as well. The sort is completely uneven. We knew that coming in. We had the same exact problem with uh, the normal queries, quote unquote normal. But now let's turn around and say, what happens when we run it over for a smaller location, like say San Diego? Now, if I run it for San Diego, the London plan went into cache. Thanks, Winnie, I appreciate it. Uh, Voight, this is the big one, yes. If I run the large or I run the small one, like for Stack Overflow, it looks parallel. But is it? The parallel plan was stuck in memory, but that doesn't mean that the data was evenly balanced. All of the work is done by one single thread. Coming all the way up here into the sort, all of the work was just done by one thread. When you see an execution plan and there are parallelism icons, that doesn't mean jack, especially on a stored procedure or anything that sniffs parameters. Because what might have happened was that the parallel plan went into cache, but when you call it for much smaller amounts of data, those seven threads that aren't doing anything, all they're doing is they're piling up weights on CX packet, and that's it. Now, this is why people go through and say, this is why people go through and say, now y'all are asking a bunch of interesting questions around parameter sniffing. That's why I have a whole separate class just on parameter sniffing. And I talk about things like recompile and what optimize hints to use, how to know what's the good plan, how to know what's the bad plan, how often different parameters get called, all kinds of stuff like that. But the idea of this demo is just basically to show you that when you see large amounts of CX packet weights, this is the kind of problem that's happening. Work isn't evenly balanced across all of the cores. How you go about fixing it, there are tons of ways. You can try getting different execution plans. You can try to reduce the blast area by doing things like max stop hints, setting max stop at the server level, using resource governor and all that. 
but it's really hard to chase down. This is why you don't usually see people, Jose, good to see you. Um, so this is why you don't usually see people troubleshooting CX packet in, uh, at that particular scale, because it's just so hard. Every query that you have that's ever gotten parameter sniffing, that ever got a parallel plan, whenever it's called for small data, it's just going to sit around accumulating CX packet weights, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You're just generating a big parallel plan and then calling it for tiny amounts of data. If I switch over to a single threaded plan, it's not like San Diego is going to run faster because at the end of the day, this is a single thread plan for San Diego and that's fine. All SQL Server did was spin up seven extra worker threads who could be used if we found a surprising amount of data in San Diego, but we didn't. So those seven threads didn't really hurt us at all in this case. Yes, memory was carved up in that sort. That memory was split out across all the different threads. But when I have tiny data, who cares? San Diego is completely able to slot into one of these threads and bail back out. So that's the demo, and then we, I'm going to go into more details in there in Mastering Query Tuning. In the class in Mastering Query Tuning, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show people how to rewrite the query uh, and rebalance the work at different stages. For example, if I wanted to force SQL Server to go find the users first, and then rebalance the work across multiple threads before it went into the users table. You could do banana pants rewrites like this that will then go in and force SQL Server to do the work in multiple phases like that. And here the plan starts to get a little uglier, but the cool part in here is that we have multiple parallelism operators that will gather the streams and then redistribute the streams so they might have been unevenly balanced at one point. Like here, they're unevenly balanced across just three threads. But as soon as I get past this parallelism operator and get to where it's rebalanced, see how it says distribute streams? Now, when it comes out of the distribute streams, it's evenly balanced across eight threads. What we did was we said, all right, folks, we're going to send eight people out into the supply closet to go find the people who live in London. Then I want you all to come back and gather in with me, and I'm going to redistribute the work. And the people who are on a smoke break are like, oh, man, come on. I, I was just starting to enjoy this. I just lit this unfiltered camel. And then they have to come back in, and they have to redistribute the work so that then those eight, all eight people are coming back in on the job. If I look at in the index seeks that are done, for example, now I can start to see that they're evenly balanced again. Right that on. is much better. Now, in the case of this tiny query that only runs five people, or only runs uh, uh, in five seconds, I'm not worried about it at all. But out in production, where we start talking about queries that run for hours on end, that's where the stuff starts to matter. Andy says, what, do we use more memory with the CTE trick? To find out, you know how you would find out is you would start looking at the memory grant for each one, hovering your mouse over there, and then you can compare the execution plans from there. All right. So... <laughs> That's everything that I wanted to show you all this morning. Let me know what you thought of the demo. Tell me over in uh, chat what you thought of that demo. Um, and then uh, what, what else is uh, interesting to me about this is ask, tell me what questions you would have next. Like what is the next thing that you would want to see answered? And I'm not going to answer them in today. I have to go off and do the clienting thing. I got to go grab some breakfast. In the meantime, a quick shout out over to Quest. So Quest is doing a totally free Ask the Experts. I use that term loosely uh, with me and Pinal where you can ask us performance tuning questions and then we go off and answer them. That's on June 24th. Totally free. You can register for that at brentozar.com slash go slash experts. And if you can't be there, we, registering for it will also get you access to the recordings. It's exactly the same web page. So thanks. Uh, <laughs> Jedi Mind Gorilla says I can answer fish questions. Ah, interesting. All right. 
Um, so good, glad to see y'all in here. Uh, glad you, that you're liking the demos. I always have fun with doing this kind of thing. Now I gotta go out and uh, go get me some breakfast and then uh, go, he oh, HSP. Henrik, I always think of you as HSP. And I don't know why, it's just all like, I don't know if there's also that, I think it was modem signal processing things were HSP, but I always think of you as HSP. So, uh, ooh, most famous location in Wales. Yeah, no, I'm good for that. I would say, the most famous location in Wales. That's what I would say. All right, thanks for hanging out with me this morning, and I will see y'all later on the next stream. Adios. <laughs>